Hey there guys, it's Nick, the ASMR nerd, and welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Today we are not looking at a mechanical keyboard. Surprise, I know. Today we're looking at a wooden watch, and you might recall that I've actually reviewed a couple of wooden watches here on the channel before, and they were very, very lovely watches made with all kinds of premium materials like ebony wood and copper, and the movements, the internals of those watches were automatic mechanical movements, which means they didn't require a battery. Uh, they powered themselves just from the motion of your wrist, and all the internals were like gears and springs and that kind of stuff. Really, really cool. But they commanded a premium price. Um, both of those watches that I reviewed previously were multiple hundreds of dollars. And let's be real, that's a lot of money to spend on something that's ultimately a luxury indulgence, right? Like, nobody really needs a wristwatch in this day and age, uh, because I would bet that all of you probably own a smartphone or something similar that can keep the time just fine. And so a wristwatch these days is just as much of a, a fashion statement, a piece of, you know, jewelry or kind of art on your wrist as it is uh, a time-telling device. And so the high price on those previous watches was a sticking point with many of you, and understandably so. But what if you want a nice wristwatch made with some of those premium materials like natural wood and those sorts of things? but you don't really care about the automatic mechanical movement inside. You just want something that looks nice on your wrist and that doesn't break the bank. Well, then this, my friend, is the review for you. Today, I'm looking at a watch from a company called Tree Hut, and Tree Hut specializes in making watches from natural materials, including wood primarily, leather, and even marble on some of their higher-end models. Today, I'm actually reviewing one of their more inexpensive models. It's the All Ebony Maple Burl model, and it comes in at under $100. It costs $95. And uh, we're going to be taking a close look at it here today. Tree Hut was kind enough to send one over for us to look at. It does, as the name suggests, have an all ebony strap and case with a maple burl face. The internals are a quartz electronic movement, so they use a battery, but it should keep very good time. And uh, it helps bring the price down keep it at that reasonable $95 price point. But not only did Tree Hut send over a watch for me to review today, they also sent over one for me to give away to one of you. And I'm going to show it to you right now. This is a little teaser for the review to come. This is the box right here. And this right here is the watch that I am giving away, courtesy of Tree Hut. This is actually not the same model that I'm reviewing today. This one is called the Classic All Ebony Theo Blue Watch. And uh, as you can see, it has an all ebony uh, strap and body of the watch uh, and face as well. It's got these lovely silvery markings all around and it's got a blue accent hand that really pops there uh, that I think looks really, really nice. So this watch here, literally this very watch, could be yours. All you have to do to win this watch or to enter for a chance to win this watch is to click through on the link down in the video description. It'll be right at the top of the video description. I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments, so either will get you there. On the contest entry page, I'm trying to make this as easy as I can for you. All I need is your first name, 
and your email, an email that you check regularly. Make sure it's one that you check regularly so that I can contact you if you win. Uh, so click through on that link, enter that contest. There are ways that you can get additional entries to increase your likelihood of winning. Things like following me on Twitch. <laughs> I do have a Twitch channel where I stream every week, every Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and I would love to see you there as well. But for the basic entry, all you have to do is enter your email and your name. Uh, this contest is going to run for two weeks from the time of posting of this video, which means I think that it ends on August 25th. I'm fairly sure it's August 25th at the end of the day, midnight Pacific time on August 25th. It should be a Sunday. I'll put something down here if I got that date wrong, but all that information is down in the video description and also on the uh, giveaway entry page itself. So if you're thinking about entering, just go do it right now. Pause this video, go enter the giveaway uh, just in case you forget and then two weeks fly by and you're like, ah, oh, crap, I meant to enter to win that watch because uh, it's a pretty nice looking watch and uh, I would like for you to have a chance to win it. All right, I think that's everything that I have to say here. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at Tree Hut's All Ebony Maple Burl Wooden Wristwatch. And here we have Tree Hut's classic All Ebony Maple Burl Wooden Watch in box. And it's a fairly appealing box. It's got this white cardboard sleeve on the outside. And it's got a very minimalistic aesthetic. It just has the Tree Hunt logo and name here in a shiny finish. And that's it. There's nothing else on this white sleeve on any of the sides. Feels like a fairly solid little package. So if we remove the sleeve, inside we have another sleeve. Um, this one is a matte gray uh, textured material made to look, I think, like a fabric. It's got a bit of a weave texture to it, woven texture. Um, and again, we have the Tree Hut branding embossed in a shiny finish. Um, and nothing else. I like the sounds this makes, though. It's kind of a nice soft feel to it, and I think it's probably cardboard as well, but it's a very thick cardboard. You can see in profile, it feels very solid, feels high quality. And then inside that, we have this uh, cardboard box with all kinds of doodles all over it. This gets, I guess, the more kind of fun side of Tree Hut's branding. We've got all kinds of things. What do we got? We got a camper van with a surfboard on it. We've got watches, of course. Binoculars and sunglasses. And mountains and trees. And the Golden Gate Bridge up at the top there. Because, uh, as I mentioned, Tree Hut is based in San Francisco. 
and they claim that all of their watches are handmade in San Francisco. So, a little bit of that motif there. Really, what I think this is trying to show is a adventure, you know? They're trying to play up that sort of, here's a piece of nature on your wrist. This is somehow tied to your next big adventure. It's cute. I like it. Alright. And inside there, I can pop this out. Just slide it like so. And there is our watch. The All Ebony Maple Burl. One of their classic designs. The inside of this sleeve is textured, and it might actually, I think it is fabric. It's very soft. thing makes and yeah it's very thick solid nice quality packaging it's not uh you know like a cedar wood box or anything like that but it looks nice it feels nice it'd be a fine place to store your watch or you not or you not wearing it so we can see uh that this doodle motif actually covers the entirety of this innermost box and we can withdraw the watch. It is on a cushion, as one might expect. It's uh, a soft fabric. It's actually the same fabric as the inside of the box, or the sleeve, I'm fairly certain. It's almost like a faux leather in a way. It feels like a microfiber cloth but it has a leather-like texture to it. It's nice. And we'll take a much closer look at that watch in a moment, but let's see what other pack-ins come with oop, the watch. So, uh, again, the inside of this box is that same fabric. It gives it all a nice plush kind of premium feel. Okay, we've got some kind of advertising, I suppose. It says here, Tree Hut, share your story and win $500. So this must be a promotion on their website. And on the back, there's a spot for you to write about your engraving story and your engraving. So. Um, and all the pictures on the front are of an engraved watch. So, uh, Tree Hut offers engraving on their watches. I believe all their watches. Uh, you can do up to ten words. Uh, characters and emojis, I believe, are all fair game. Uh, and it's $25 on top of the base price of the watch. And as you will see in a moment, this watch is engraved. The one they sent is engraved. So, anyway, I guess if you share your engraving pictures online, perhaps you can win money. Something like that. And then, uh, <laughs> the ever-important silica packet, <laughs> of course. Keep things dry, the desiccant. And then... And then, a little package. Uh, and this is kind of a nice little extra. It is uh, a couple of watch links for the strap. Uh, ebony, naturally, because this is an all ebony watch, except for the maple burl face. Uh, and this watch should have come sized. It probably is sized, which is why we've got some extra links here. Um, 
I gave the Myra size beforehand. Now that doesn't seem to be an option, uh, you know, to pay to have it sized on their website. I didn't see it. Uh, granted, I didn't go all the way through the checkout, so perhaps it's there further along. Uh, I believe there's a spot where you can leave notes with your order as well, so perhaps you could ask for it to be sized there. Regardless, though, uh, it looks like they do include uh, the tools for resizing your own watch, which is actually a really nice pack-in. Uh, as you may know, I've reviewed much more expensive watches that did not come with these resizing tools. I had to take it to uh, a watch, uh, you know, shop to get it resized. Uh, so. Uh, it's nice that Tree Hut gives you the means to do that yourself. You can take a quick closer look at these things just to see what they're all about. So a couple of pins. These would be for adding more links, uh, the links themselves, made of ebony, and then honestly a, a plethora of of little uh, tools here. I don't even know how these all work. We've got, uh, I guess it's a little screwdriver, flathead. For some reason there's two flathead screwdrivers in here. I don't know why. And then a little pokey tool for pushing those pins out, I think. I'm honestly not quite sure how these things work. I might have to look it up online. Uh, and I might have to look it up online because there is nothing else in this box. There's no user guide. There's no technical description of the watch or its components. Uh, there's no resizing guide. There's no care guide. I'm surprised that there's no care guide. Um, because wooden watches take a little bit more care than your average watch. You have to be careful about not getting them too wet or too dry. And ideally, they should be oiled periodically. Uh, but no oil included with this watch and no care guide. So perhaps that all exists on Tree Hut's website. I'm not certain. Uh, but interesting that there's really nothing else here. It's just the watch and an ad and then all these little uh, tools and links. So now it's time for the main event. Let's take a look. So here we have the all ebony maple burl tree hut watch. And uh, it looks really nice. It looks very sharp, doesn't it? It's got a 45 millimeter diameter for the housing, which should be comfortable on most wrists. They have this categorized under the men's section on their website, but they do say all their watches are, of course, you know, unisex. Anyone could wear them, and this would look nice on, on any wrist, I think. Um, it's got a flat watch glass face, and... Uh, in the absence of any other information, I must assume it's it's just simply a glass face. It's not sapphire crystal or anything, so it may be prone to scratching. Something you would have to be careful about. Uh, it might not be as resilient as some other materials. Um, and there's no plastic cover or anything on here. It's just the bear watch. Let's take it off the uh, cushion here. So the clasp is tree hot branded. It is stainless steel and it pops off with these buttons like so. 
There's a, uh, what do they call this design? A bifold uh, stainless steel clasp, I think. Um, but it looks simple enough. There's that cushion. Nothing else much to see there. Put that aside. So the watch is fairly light, um, and that stands to reason, because uh, although it is made out of ebony wood, which is fairly dense as far as woods go. It's not very thick. Uh, I believe it is 11 millimeters. Yeah, 10, 10 or 11, I think the literature said. Um, and it is all entirely made of wood. So there's no, you know, steel frame or anything in here. It's just wood. And uh, you can see that this ebony that they use, for this particular model anyway, is a much browner ebony uh, than you may have seen elsewhere. Ebony runs the gamut from deep dark black uh, through to uh, darker brown tones like this, uh, and even some sort of cool black tones. Um, but this is a much lighter ebony than I'm used to. It has... Uh, some texture, some grain that you can see. Uh, but it does finish up very smooth. That is one of the benefits of ebony. You can see definitely some of the grain and coloration, natural coloration on the side of the watch there. It was very nice, actually. I really, I love being able to see some of that natural mottling and coloration. That's what makes each one of these wooden watches unique and, and theoretically more interesting than uh, your standard steel watch. When you use natural materials, you get some of that natural variability, so each one does feel a bit more unique. And of course the movement inside is uh, another reason why this is so light. The movement inside is a quartz movement. So it uses a battery and it is not an automatic mechanical watch. So there's actually quite a lot less hardware inside. The movements uh, for these watches, the quartz movements, are supplied by Miyota, which is a subsidiary of Citizen, and generally those those movements are well regarded. They're considered good good quality quartz movement, so I expect it will keep time very, very well. Um, better than any automatic mechanical watch. Uh, and that is, of course, the great benefit of quartz movements. They keep fantastic time, and they are light, small and light and compact. So all that results in a watch that is quite thin, low profile, quite light, generally slim, and uh, would probably feel at home on most wrists. Uh, the face is not ebony. The face is maple burl, and burl of wood is wood that's taken from a, a growth on a tree. You might have seen them on some trees before. It's kind of like a bulbous, almost like a tumor on the tree. Um, uh, but the wood that grows in the burls uh, grows in a sort of more uh, irregular pattern. So the grain is often all irregular. And you get these kind of swirls and patterns that often produce a really nice texture. And you can see that here in this watch. And that was actually they when uh, Tree Hut contacted me, they asked, you know, what watch I was interested in. And I said, well, this one looks nice because I love the look of that burl, that maple burl. It just, again, it really accentuates the natural materials in the watch. 
and um, the texturing of the burl is going to be quite unique to each one of these. So that's pretty neat. And then in terms of the markings on the face, uh, you can see the numerals are engraved uh, in the cardinal directions. So we've got uh, 12, 3, 9, and 6. Um, and the in-between numbers are just little marks. Just little dashes. And there's a little bit of inconsistency in the darkness of those dashes, honestly. The notches up between, um, up here, between 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock, it might be, oop, might be difficult for you to see on camera, but I can see that they are a little bit more faded than some of the other notches. And... I don't know if they put like a little bit of ink in there or something to try and make them stand out a bit, but they are, they are engraved. Perhaps you can see each, I lost the focus on the reflection, each notch and numeral is actually engraved on the watch face. And then there's of course the little tree hut logo. Uh, the hands, there's two big black hands there. And then the second hand, taking away there, is in red. It's a nice little red accent hand. I think that really uh, looks nice. Helps complement the sort of deep brown of the strap and case and the lighter brown of the face there. Love the textures. Love those textures on that maple pearl. Very nice. Very nice. Now, as you may have noticed, uh, the watch, it does make a little tick. I'll hold it up to your ear here. Perhaps you can hear it. Can you hear that? It's very quiet. It's much quieter than my automatic mechanical watches. Which again stands to reason, uh, because this has not got nearly as many little moving parts inside. Uh, overall, I think this looks really, really nice. I will say the readability of the face is not quite as good as I had hoped. Uh, the hands are bold, which is great, but the actual notches and numerals themselves are a little more subtle than I would like, but uh, it does work nicely with the with the aesthetic. Um, it all sort of looks very uh, nicely balanced, I guess I would say, visually. Uh, and I do love the minimalist aesthetic. You know, there's nothing happening around the face. It's just a nice, smooth, clean case. Um, and uh, on the face itself, really very little going on and I think that really helps highlight the natural materials and the uniqueness of the, ma the natural materials used. Uh, it's got a little crown here which will be for setting the time. Uh, that is one of the few pieces of man-made material on this watch uh, aside from of course the hands and the uh, clasp. But uh, it's a nice enough looking little crown. Nothing too special about it. It does have a Tree Hut logo on it. You can see it there. Just a nice little accent. And then finally, what I'd like to show you guys is on the back of the watch, the engraving. And this is always a little bit of a challenge to show off, but I think it'll show up if I do this. Yeah, there it is. Do you see? <laughs> So they've engraved this watch with my channel name, the ASMR Nerd. Like I said, you can do up to 10 words on the back there. So if you wanted to dedicate it to a loved one or, or a particular special event or something, you could do that. Uh, 
is, like I said, $25 additional to do that. And it looks like not only is it engraved, there is a texture, like a depth to that. It is engraved, but it's also been filled with a kind of a gold finish, which helps it read uh, more easily. Um, and the back of that watch looks really nice, doesn't it? No fancy glass back, because of course there's no fancy internals to show off. But you do get this very nice um, sort of flat wooden surface where you can really appreciate that ebony grain and some of the colors going on there. <laughs> Getting this lighting to work is just, just a nightmare. I hope that you can sort of see what's happening here. And the finish on the watch, it's a nice soft, kind of satiny finish all around. You can see, it catches light there. And it says stainless steel on the inside of the clasp there. Might not be able to show it to you, just trust me, it says it. <laughs> it's in there. Okay, so that's the 360 tour of the watch. Uh, this is the correct time. <laughs> it uh, came with the right time. I do my filming late at night, so the watch is not lying. Let's try it on. And there we have it. Uh, now, I said that I, I did think it was fitted, and they probably did fit it, um, but it is a little on the loose side. Uh, so I will probably make use of those tools that we saw a moment ago uh, to size this down. I, I have a hard time with my wrist size. I have fairly narrow wrists, and uh, this isn't actually the first time that I've given a wrist measurement and had something coming a little bit large. Um, so maybe I should just shave another half centimeter off the measurements I give. But I think that looks nice on the wrist. I think that uh, actually works very well on my slightly uh, slimmer wrist. Uh, some of the watches I've reviewed in past, like those from Yod, very nice watches, but very chunky. Very thick watches with big faces. And, uh, and maybe a little too large in some cases for a slimmer wrist. Whereas this one, like I said, I think it would work on pretty much any wrist. Um, that clasp closes up nice and easy. I think it looks very nice. Pop it open one more time for you. And I, I really do like this, this band. It's very nice. It, uh, it's very flexible. It's not stiff at all. Overall, very nice looking watch, nice feeling watch. Because it's a bit lighter, it doesn't carry quite the same sense of quality, solidity, as some other watches that I've uh, uh, reviewed and worn. But uh, nevertheless, it does hold up to inspection, I think. I think it looks really good. Uh, and it does feel good, despite being a bit lighter. You can hear the sort of clacking clasp or clacking strap. Hmm. All right. Um, why don't we? Yeah. Why not? Why don't we resize this watch? Do you want to come along for the ride while I resize it? Why not? We'll see how it goes. So it's probably worth pointing out that I've never actually resized a watch band before, but <laughs> despite the lack of included instructions, uh, after a little bit of poking and prodding and examination, I think I've figured out how we're going to do this. So uh, we don't actually have that many links that 
we can remove. We've got one on this side that could come out, this one. And we've got one on this side that could come out. Now, ideally, you want to remove an even number from each side so that uh, the watch stays centered on your wrist. But if I take both out, it might be too tight. Nevertheless, uh, I think we will take both out just for illustrative purposes here. I'll try it on. It might be too small. Uh, I can always add one in after myself. Um, so, I believe, I think I figured out why we need two of these screwdrivers, <laughs> for starters. I'll show you right now. Well, actually, let's do that. Okay. First, uh, this link right here, this first link right after the steel band has a pin in it. It has a very small pin in it. It's smaller than the other pins. And for that, we can simply use this little pusher tool, push pin tool, which will allow us to just, I think, stick it in there. And then I think we can just push firmly <laughs> to get this out. I need some surface to push against. There we go. And the push pin just pops out like so or the pin, and uh, should be able to put that there. And now, ta-da! So, step one complete. <laughs> we got the, the clasp undone from the strap on this side. But now, this link, it's actually a great opportunity for me to show you the back of the watch. You can see it much better now. See, that printing looks very nice. I should have done this earlier. <laughs> um, this pin is a little bit different, and I'll show you the extra pins that we got. Um, it's got a little flat head, head on each end. One of them is built into the pin. The other is actually a tiny little screw, and it'll back out, thread it, back out just like that, just like so. And that is what we're going to have to remove here to get this link off. Um, but the trick in that, of course, is that you have to keep one end stationary while you unscrew the other. And I'm not sure which of these ends actually is the, the end with the... Oh, actually... Maybe I'm overcomplicating things. Let's see, this might just come right out. Oops. Oh, it totally is. So, I thought I was going to have to secure it on one end. Oh, jeez. On one end, uh, with one screwdriver, while I unscrewed with the other. But no, uh, it's actually just backing right out easily. And I think... Can we get this out of here? There we go. Would you look at that? So that little screw just came right out. Nice and easy. And then we should just be able to use the push pin to push. just going straight into the hole left by that screw because apparently there's a little hollow things I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's only one end that has a screw yeah it definitely is so it should just pop out here it should just pop out I can use this there we go so this pin comes out so you can see the hole on the end where that little screw was. If it's going to focus, there we go. It's fine work, but it's not impossible. And just like that, the link comes out. Very easy. So you know what? At this point, let's see how it fits. It's going to be a little lopsided right now, which isn't great, but I'm just going to reunite this screw with its pin so that we don't accidentally lose it. 
and then it should be a simple matter of putting that together like so, taking this push pin, putting it back in the hole. a little lopsided now. You can see one, one uh, side of the strap's a little longer than the other, but let's see how that fits on my wrist now. Okay, so that's a pretty good fit, actually. That's just about ideal, honestly. Um, you can see there's really uh, no looseness now. Um, it has enough to just slide up and down the wrist a little bit, but not too much. But, of course, the downside is that uh, it's not centered on the clasp anymore. But you know what? You can't really tell, and I can't really feel it when I'm wearing it. So maybe that's not such a problem after all. It still sits centered on the wrist nicely. So uh, I might just leave it like this. <laughs> I said I was going to take off both, but... I do not think there's enough room for me to take off both, or enough length. I think that's going to result in something that is too tiny for my wrist, so we're just going to leave it like this. Um, and that should be fine. That should be fine. I think that'll work just dandy. So that wasn't too bad, was it? It was just a matter of a couple of minutes of figuring, and we managed to muck around with it and get it sorted. Uh, and having resized it now, I can say I'm, I'm quite happy with the size and the fit. I'm quite happy with the, with the aesthetics, of course. It looks fantastic. Uh, and uh, I'm quite happy with the feel of it overall. But that's only part of the equation, of course. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, see how it wears. So I'm going to wear it for a while, uh, see how it you know feels in terms of comfort, see how it keeps time. I expect it'll be quite comfortable because it is quite light and slim and I expect it will keep time quite well because of that quartz movement but we shall see. We'll also see what other people say about it because you know part of wearing a watch is that you want to look nice. You want people to notice that you look nice. So all those things. I will then uh, come back. We will reconvene. I'll uh, tell you all about the wearing experience and then we will run down the pros and the cons before I give you my final verdict on this Treehound watch. Alright, so I've had the opportunity to wear the All Ebony Maple Burl from Tree Hut for a, a couple of weeks now. I've worn it daily, I've worn it pretty much all day long, every day, uh, in a variety of different kind of work scenarios and conditions and things like that. And uh, normally this is the point of the video where I would have kind of a face-to-face -face discussion with you about my experiences using the product. Um, but you might notice I'm standing over on the side of the screen where I stand when I'm about to list the pros of a product. And that's because I'm going to jump right into the pros today. It just seems to me it'll be a little bit redundant for me to talk about using or wearing the watch and then talk about it some more. So we're going to try and simplify things here today. So starting with the pros, uh, the first thing that I really liked about wearing this wristwatch is that it's very, very comfortable. Uh, it is light, it is slim, and so it didn't get in the way at all. In fact, often I forgot that I was wearing it on my wrist. Uh, it was so comfortable, uh, which is really, really nice because not all watches uh, feel so light on the wrist. Uh, so that's something I really appreciated. It made it very practical for everyday wear. Uh, the second thing that I really like about this watch is maybe one of the more obvious things, and that is the gorgeous woods used on this watch. You get this nice, rich, brown ebony, of course, which you've already seen, but I'll show it to you again, and a lovely maple burl face with that kind of unique disordered looking wood grain that gives it uh, so much character. 
Uh, and that little red accent hand, I think, is a fantastic pairing for these woods. Um, and so the use of lovely wood material throughout uh, is certainly one of the pros of this wristwatch and one of the things that catches most people's eye. They think or they find a wooden wristwatch to be quite unique because, to be fair, it's not something that you see a lot of people wearing yet. Anyway, I think they're increasing in popularity. Uh, but related to the use of wood in this wristwatch is that all the materials that uh, that Tree Hut uses, all the woods in particular, are uh, environmentally and socially uh, sustainable. They're very, very careful about their sourcing. And I, this is actually something that I asked the Tree Hut representative that I've been in contact with. I wanted to make sure that... Um, you know, that uh, the materials that are used in these watches are not destroying the environment. Like ebony is a species at risk in some areas. It's considered endangered in some parts of the world, uh, world and it's not uh, always uh, socially sustainably sourced either. But um, by the sounds of it, at least from what I've been told, Tree Hut works very, very hard uh, to maintain um, ethical sourcing for all their natural materials. So that definitely belongs up there on the list of pluses. Uh, also, this is a wristwatch. One would hope that it keeps good time. And in fact, it does. Um, this is an electronic quartz movement, like I said. Um, and it is really, really good. I did not notice any, <laughs> any gain or loss in the time on this watch over the two weeks that I wore it, which is actually much tighter, much better timekeeping than the automatic mechanical watches that I've reviewed in past. Of course, that's because those designs are all mechanical. They have no electronic components. It's all just the kinetic motion of your wrist and all kinds of gears and cogs and springs and stuff. That is a, its own kind of thing with different expectations. But uh, this, this here, um, electronic quartz movement has kept very very good time uh, like i said imperceptible change in time if anything so certainly can't complain about that i don't know how long this battery is going to last i suspect quite a long time uh, and it doesn't cost much to replace it right like these cr whatever they are 2032 watch batteries are usually five six seven dollars or something so can't complain about that uh one other thing that I'd like to call out about this watch was the included sizing tools. That is not something that I actually expected to see with this watch, but it's something that I really appreciate because, as you saw, it did come sized a little big for me, and I did have to use those tools to remove a link. It allowed me to do so without having to take it into a jeweler, pay to get it sized, and in doing so, I improved the fit dramatically. Like I said, incredibly comfortable on my wrist. And the final thing that I'd like to put here on my pros list is that this watch is very reasonably priced. A lot of the times when people see premium materials like ebony and exotic wood like ebony, they think, oh, that's going to be outrageously expensive. And some of these wooden watches are and can get quite pricey, multiple hundreds of dollars, like I was saying at the beginning of the video. However, this watch is priced at a much more palatable 95 US dollars. So coming in under that Benjamin, under that hundred dollar price point, uh, I think that this case, uh, this watch becomes much more appealing for the majority of buyers. And certainly considering the quality of the product and uh, the materials used, very nice ebony and all that, uh, I think that's a very, very fair price to pay for this watch. However, nothing is perfect. If I've learned anything from doing these reviews is that I can always find a couple of things to nitpick about. And the first of those cons that I'm going to mention for this wristwatch was the limited packins that came with this package. Uh, I did appreciate that it came with the sizing tools, which was unexpected, but it came with very little else. Um, there was a pillow <laughs> to put the watch on, and there was a box, but there was no user manual for how to service or care for the watch. There was no uh, conditioning oil or anything like that. Um, and these wooden watches, they do 
require a bit more care than your average metal watch because uh, the wood can't get too wet, too humid, and it can't get too dry or else it gets damaged. So you do have to oil these things every once in a while, six months or so, I think is what's recommended from what I've read. Uh, but nothing about that in the package for these watches. No conditioning oil included. Um, no microfiber cloth. Uh, for like wiping the watch face, that seems like a real missed opportunity because that's super, super inexpensive to include. They could brand it, you know, the whole thing. Um, so overall, the the package itself just felt like it was lacking a little bit with no, uh, you know, no instruction manual, no none of those extra pack-ins or anything like that. The second and actually final con <laughs> that I'd like to mention about this watch is something that you might have just heard, actually. I've got it on my wrist right now. Did you hear that noise? Here, I'll do it again. Watch. Or listen, more appropriately. It's a bit rattly. And that rattle comes from this here clasp. Right there. Uh, the clasp is a little bit rattly. And overall, although it does the job, it secures the watch to your wrist. It just feels a little bit cheap. That rattle definitely contributes to that feel of slight cheapness. Now, granted, this is a relatively inexpensive watch, but for $100, I would hope for something that feels a little bit more solid, that at the very least isn't rattly. Uh, has it ruined my enjoyment of the watch? No, not in the least. Um, but it's just one of those nitpicks. It would be nicer to have something that doesn't make sound every time I move my wrist, and it feels a little bit more solid. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is all. That is pretty much everything I have to say about the Tree Hut uh, All Ebony Maple Burl. Um, it's a good watch. I enjoyed wearing it. I will continue wearing it. Uh, if not on a daily basis, then interchanging it with the other watches that I've got. Uh, it has found a home in my, my watch rotation, which is apparently a thing I'm developing. Um, <laughs> and you heard there in the pros that, you know, I think it's good value. And I do. I think this is um, an excellent value watch if you're looking for a nice wooden watch to put on your wrist, but you don't care about any of the fancy automatic mechanical internals or anything like that. Uh, so would I recommend it? Yeah, absolutely. I think Tree Hut makes a fantastic product. And they've got a lot of choice as well. You've seen here today, of course, the All Ebony Maple Burl. And at the beginning of the video, you saw the uh, Theo All Ebony Blue Watch, which is a watch that you can win. Don't forget to go enter that giveaway uh, with the link in the video description and in the comments. Um, but they got a whole bunch of other stuff too. The products run the gamut in prices from about $100 up to multiple hundreds if you want something a little more premium you can get marble faces all kinds of other neat stuff uh, that's quite quite lovely at least based on the pictures um, and so if that stuff interests you there is of course a link down in the video description where you can go to browse their catalog and uh, check out those additional watches but as for tree huts all ebony maple burl really really solid little watch at a very very reasonable price and that, my friends, brings us to the end of another relaxing review. Remember, of course, again, I'm going to say, go click through and enter that giveaway to win one of these watches, or a very similar one. Uh, this other, the All Ebony Theo Blue, looks really, really nice. I'm a little envious, a little hesitant to give it away, <laughs> but uh, I want to give it away. I want one of you to win it, so... Uh, please go click through down in the video description or down in the comments and enter that giveaway. You have two weeks from the time that this video is posted uh, to go enter that. It ends, this giveaway ends, I believe, on August 25th, 2019 at midnight Pacific time. Uh, you can go double check all the contest information and rules and stuff down in the video description and also on the giveaway page. All right, uh, special thanks, of course, to Tree Hut for facilitating this review today, for sending over not only the uh, 
all ebony maple burl that I reviewed, but also the Theo Blue, which you're going to be entering to win. Uh, and of course, special thanks to all of you guys. I hope you found this review informative. I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you all back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Bye for now, guys.